Today on Papa's DIY Solar Power, we added a lithium ion phosphate battery to this MPP 5000 watt off grid inverter. We replaced those four AGMs with this battery, and this is a 51.2 100 amp hour. 5120 watt hour lithium ion phosphate. It has a gate or a display on this. Right now we're sitting at 55.9 volts, charging at 0.3 amps because we're at 100% state of charge. Now the nice thing about this is we can look at our BMS for our cells and we can see that there is, uh, see that there is 16 cells there so we have the first nine on the first screen and then we have 10 through 16 on there and that's showing all of our cells being charged and balanced we got this from a new supplier here southwest solar supply and if you go to swsolarsupply.com you can take a look at what Rich Eagleton has over there. And if you look, here's some of the stuff that he has. Solar panels, he's got the um, Wi-Fi dongle. He's got grid tie inverters, uh, low voltage inverters. He's got the uh, GrowWatt inverters over there he's got the um, big these will start a three and a half four ton AC on on that grow watt right there he also has 48 volt but one thing about these grow watts in those low frequency is you can't parallel that with anything else this one you could parallel uh, I believe that one you can parallel but once again that one you're maxed out at 12 kilowatts and I actually have the 12 kilowatt 48 volt but mine's 150 volt DC which is right here that starts a three and a half and a four ton and runs them both at the same time main house air conditioners it's got more more um, there's a charge controller he's got more inverters there's the um, I'm not sure what that is. It's a five kilowatt battery ready grow watt. This is the battery that I got right here. And you can go on there and you can see the prices he has for this stuff. And he also has transformers that I'll be putting on this one to see if we can start that three and a half ton air conditioner. We've never been able to start it with this MPP or any of these MPPs, but we've started run the three and a half ton and the four ton with this running those AGMs with just four AGMs. And I think 3,000 or 3,500 watts and 250 watt used panels was able to fire up that three and a half ton heat pump upstairs AC. So, but we're going to go into this uh, programming this inverter for that lithium ion phosphate battery. And I'll tell you what, I connected this yesterday, ran my loads overnight. I ran that freezer, that freezer, this fridge, refrigerator freezer. I ran that 50 watt, uh, it's a bathroom fan that I pull air in from outside when it's cold overnight. And then I ran some lights outside all off of this. And when I got up in the morning, this was at 52.3 volts and it was a 66% state of charge. So 
I lost uh, 34 percent. I used 34 percent of my battery um, overnight to run all that stuff. I didn't have to have a plug in in the grid. So pretty impressed with this battery lithium ion phosphate so far. I really like it. When I paired it up and connected it with this yesterday, I've not had one problem at all. It just works seamlessly. So let me talk to you about what the settings I have on this, if you have one of these. If you go into the settings, it's pretty easy. You just go into the enter and hold down until you get into the settings. Here we are. Then you're gonna go, on this one, you're gonna go down to actually go up. When you program it, that's up and that's down. But to actually go from zero on up, you're gonna do this. I have this first one set at solar battery utility on that. And that is the output priority to how you're gonna charge your battery with either solar utility or solar battery and utility. And then the next one there is our charge current total for it. And we have that set up, I believe at 80 amps. We have the setup at 80 amps. Uh, number three, you can either charge that, have that where it's appliance or UPS. And we have that set on UPS for this. The battery type number five here, we had to set that at user defined. And that's because it's lithium ion phosphate. If you go in here, your choices will be AGM, flooded, user defined. So you only have three choices. So if you're gonna use a lithium ion phosphate, you're gonna to have to use user defined on this MPP 5000 watt inverter. Now for number six, that is the automatic restart, and we have that as enabled. Now if I wanted to disable that, I would just press the enter button. Now this, now this is flashing, and I can press up or down, and it'll change it. So we'll keep that on enable. Once we have it set, we hit the enter button, and that's set. So number seven in here is our automatic restart and once again we have that as enabled so number eight is our output voltage and that's coming off each leg so uh the default on that is 120 volts and we left that at 120 volts number nine is 60 hertz in north america we don't use 50 hertz europe and places like that do I understand it's a little more efficient. Now for utility charging, we have that set at 40 amps. We're not really using utility, although we do have this connected so we can actually plug in um, into this inverter, because these are all pure fine, sine wave. We can plug it into this inverter on those outlets or we can plug it in that set of inverters on those outlets right there. So we can interchange on these. Now number 40 i'm sorry number 12 that is our soul our setting voltage point back we have that set up at 44 volts so when it drops down to that uh, i believe that we'll cut this off number 13 is our setting for the point back in battery mode when selecting sbu or solar first we have that set up as 56 volts. Number 16 is our charge source priority. And we have that set up as solar and utility because we can, we do have that ability to do that. Now, number 18 is our alarm. And we actually have that turned off on this. Number 19 on here is our automatic return default display screen. So when this, um, if this were to do something or when I'm done with this, it would automatically return to the screen I had it on. 
or no, I'm sorry, I have that set up where it should, goes back to the default screen. I could turn that off and I believe um, it would, if I go, no, I do have that. So it'll stay on the latest screen. Now, number 20 is just the back lighting and that's on. Number 22 is the beeps while primary source is interrupted. I have that on. Number 23 is our overload bypass, and that is enabled on this. Number 25 is our fault record, and we have that enabled on here. Number 26 is our bulk charge voltage, and that was at 56.4 as a default, and we set that up to 56. Um, our float charge is number 27, and that was 54. We bumped that up to 56. And number 28 is our AC output. Now you have choices here if you look in here, but we're at 240 volts. So we have it on 2A2 on that for 240 volt output. Number 29 is our low DC cutoff. And that was at 42, I didn't want it that low. So we programmed that to 44. And this is for your, whether you have one inverter or parallel inverters. And right now we only have just this one inverter. We don't have another one because we'd have to parallel with the exact same inverter. So we just have this one. So we have it set up on one. And number 31 is the solar power balance. Now on these, I don't really have that enabled right now, but I'll just go through them so that you can see the setting for, I'm sorry, for 31 is SBE, 32 is AUL, I'm not sure what that is. EDS for number 33, number 34 is set at 58 volts. That's for the balancing. It would go up to 58 when it's doing that. This is number 35 set for 60 minutes. This is set for 120 minutes. This is number 37 is set for 30 days. And 39 is, um, you could equalization activated immediately and we have that disabled. And then you go right back to number one. So this last page of this book is talking about um, equalizing the battery and all your settings. So I didn't really mess with that right now. I just messed with making sure I can set it. Now, when you're in here and you're on these programming this, the way you get out is just this escape right here. If you press that, it automatically goes back. So like I said, we connected this yesterday and it was pretty much flawless. We've had no problems or anything with it. And we just ran our cable in here from the uh, positive over to right here on our breaker going in to our inverter. And then we have the negative cable comes right over here. And that was it. That's pretty much all we did on there. We actually set that on a piece of wood there. Um, and it worked fantastic. Fired that thing up, it started charging it. And um, I was playing with where I was running this mini split just off the battery bank. And I'm going to do a test on that and see how long I can run one of these mini splits. Say it's 75 degrees. I'm going to set it down to 73 and let it run in a room. One of the ones I have in one of the rooms. Just let it run on that and see how many hours I can get. So that maybe I can use this thing in an emergency 
to run a mini split, 120 volt, 12,000 BTU mini split overnight if my power were to go out. Um, right now, we use this to run our upstairs air conditioner. We set it at 66 to 68 degrees. And I just started this up at 6, 6.30 this morning um, using those two AGM battery banks. I was able to start that and have it running on a three and a half ton main house upstairs air conditioner. And it sat there and didn't drop below 49 volts on my battery. So I was doing well on that. But that'll run till 5.30 at night. We shut it off. We set that thermostat at 76 degrees and that air conditioner never turns on until the next morning when I set it back down to 66 to 68 degrees. So we don't spend any electricity and it's, it's close to 100 degrees out here right now every day during the day. So that's pretty good. But like I said, I bought this battery from Southwest Solar Supply contact Rich Ingleton and he's right here in Arizona just north of Phoenix and great guy he can ship that stuff out to you um, or you can contact him and see if you can pick it up locally from him really wonderful guy extremely knowledgeable about everything on off-grid and grid solar so give him a call and give him a try buying your products um, he's my new supplier for a lot of stuff right now. Um, so now I have three suppliers that I use, and that's fantastic. And I love the fact that two of them are within a 45-minute drive of me to go pick something up. And like I said, I was hesitant to get these, but I was able to um, get a little money selling some stuff. And I decided to use that money and go ahead and purchase one of these. This is the first one of more that I'll purchase, but I really like this thing. It's, it's going to be able to, once I get another one, I'll definitely be able to run a couple of mini splits overnight if my power goes up. Or I'll just run those mini splits overnight and not use any grid power in the middle of summertime at all doing that and then the nice thing about these is that took two and a half hours to charge up from a 66 percent state of charge at 53.2 volts as where these agms could take like five to seven hours to charge up so that charges in a half to a third of the time uh less than the agms pretty nice battery uh, if you're interested in one of those, give Rich a call. And like I said, he's got solar panels. He's got inverters. He's got it all for you. Just give him a call and talk to him, and he'll give you a good deal. Anyways, that's pretty much it for programming this. And like I said, this was the MPP 5000 watt 48 off-grid inverter. And I'm not sure if I can really, if you can really see that very well, but there's the stats on that. I'll leave it there for a second. And right now, this thing is running this 18,000 BTU air conditioner with 30 panels on it, 250 watt panels, and it's keeping this battery at a hundred percent and at almost 60 I'm sorry 56 volts on the battery bank and I can plug some other things I think I'll get my uh, pool heater going on that the 120 volt pool heater right now and keep that pool at uh, 88 degrees all using solar anyways I hope you have a truly wonderful and very blessed day Please like, share, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. And hope you have a truly wonderful and very blessed day. And we'll see you soon.